Okay, in this lesson I'm going to show you guys how to set up a project in After Effects uh, CS6. So um, when you open up the program, you're going to get the screen. So I'm just going to go with Open Project. Oh wait, I don't have project yet. So we're going to say a new composition. Um, composition, what you're going to call it at this point doesn't really matter. Um, but for the sake of this demo, I'm going to call it Importing Assets. Um, now, you're going to get a lot of options here. Uh, don't be intimidated. Um, and it just so happens that I'm set up to where I want to be. Uh, the things you need to look at here, um, you have a lot of presets, but since your end result for this class is going to be in uh, YouTube, um, we're going to want, uh, at the very least, the pixel aspect ratio to be in square pixels. Um, this is because pixels on a computer monitor are square, and that's where most people will be watching YouTube. Um, depending on, uh, I mean, depending on what kind of, since most of you are in the U.S., um, you'll be using NTSC, um, uh, PL. It doesn't really matter at this point. All these are dependent on some different ways of exporting video. Um, I know back in the day when I was creating commercials and whatnot, there's very specific uh, pixel aspect ratios and um, resolutions I needed to be exporting it at. Um, but since we're going to be focusing primarily on YouTube, the only things you need to worry about are uh, have your s pixel aspect ratio um, at square, have your frame rate at 29.97, um, the length of your project, we can change that anytime so don't worry about it. Uh, the next thing we need to look at is our um, uh, the dimensions. So uh, right now it's set to 1920 by 1080. This is what's commonly referred to as 1080p. Um, not all of your cameras um, um, or smartphones will be shooting at 1080p, but if they are, you can um, uh, set it this high if you'd like to, because YouTube will um, play video back at 1080p. Um, the, the problem with this is that it, it makes really large uh, uh, file sizes. So what I'd recommend doing is going down to 720p, which is 1280 by 720. Um, that is more than okay for this project. Uh, but I do ask that you don't go any lower than 640 by 480. Whoops, don't lock. 640, 480. That is what's commonly referred to as standard definition. Um, so definitely don't go lower than that. Um, how do you know which one to pick? Um, it's based on what assets you have. So if your most of your video is in 720p, set it to 720p. Um, the most important thing is that your um, when you import something that's too small, uh, let me show you an example of that. So 1280 by 720. And hit OK. So there's my project. Um, you have, just like any uh, Adobe program, you can change um, how the panels are set up. I would just keep it to standard for now because there's a lot of different panels you can use. Um, and I don't want to get it intimidated quite yet. Um, so I'm going to import some assets quick so I can show you what I mean by um, basing it on your footage. So as you remember, I set my project, uh, or this, this composition, to 720p. So I'm going to actually import some video that's standard definition. So I'm just going to go into I have these video files right here. And I just... I guess I should walk you through that process, huh? Let's try that again. Delete these. So I just double clicked on the project window, which is where the files you'll be using are. Um, I find the video files I want, just highlight, click open. And I like to keep organized because you know these projects tend to get huge. So I'm just gonna make a folder called video. And just throw that in there. So now, if I try to drag some standard def uh, footage into my uh, 720p window, you can see that it's much smaller um, than my frame. Now, some of your first instinct might be, you know, just scale it up. We do not want to do that because you are taking um, uh, standard definition uh, image and stretching it out, which um, those of you who've had intro to computer graphics or color theory, you know that that's a big no-no. You never want to take an image and stretch it bigger. 
because it really hurts the quality. As you can see here, um, let's turn this all the way up to full. It's already getting pretty blurry in there, and that is not good. So let's just go back down. Um, so what you should be doing is um, creating the uh, your compositions based on the footage. One way to do this is you can actually just grab any video in your project window and drag it to this icon right here and that will create a composition that is exactly the size of your footage right so let's say you're using this footage and it looks like this it will make the footage the entire length of your composition so let's make the composition a little longer so we have some room to play with uh, you can do that by hitting uh, contr uh, control K on the PC command K on the Mac um, and what I'm gonna do is right here it's only 11 seconds long I'm just gonna make it a minute and 11 seconds so we have some room to play with and you can shrink it down here by sliding this thing right down here um, let's say that after this I want to show this as show some images so let's make another folder Oops, just call it images. And then again, double click, find those images. Just drag them in the folder. So, as you can see, this is the bounding box. It's much larger than the, the actual composition. This is okay. Scaling things down, like making these things smaller, is fine. But making them larger is what you want to avoid. So I can make these a little smaller just to fit. Because as you can see, the quality still is very good. So now, um, obviously that fits fine. So using too big is always better than too little. Because you can always scale things down and not hurt the quality of your project. Um, but you can't do vice versa. Um, so, and then the last type that I will show you how to import is audio, which again is the same thing. Let's make a folder for it. Okay, so I can drag that down here. Um, now the difference between, if you dr use the drop down here, um, you get some options. So obviously, with the video, it's a little bit bigger. With the video, you have transform and audio. With the images, you just have transform, and with the audio, you just have audio. Now, as you can see, the lengths of these things. So, when you import video, this is just going to be the length uh, of the video on your timeline, and you can take off pieces by just sliding each part in to the part of the video you want to use. Um, but if you import an image, it can be as long or as short as you want it to be. So because it, it doesn't exist in time, it's just an image. So you can make it as long or short as you want it to be. Um, audio is kind of same in video. It's as long as the actual clip is. Um, so these are some of the different things um, to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing that is of utmost importance is After Effects is like Premiere in that you are only pointing to files here in the project window. You're not actually bringing them into your project. You're just pointing to them on your hard drive. Because what you're seeing here is a preview of your final project. To actually turn it into a video, you have to export it or what's called render it in this in After Effects. Um, so when you deliver files for After Effects or Premiere, you have to supply any of these things that you included in your project as well as your project file. It's not like Photoshop that if you copy and paste something into it, it stays in Photoshop. Um, so that is why um, for this class you'll be exporting your video and then uploading it to YouTube so you don't really have to mess with this as much. Um, but that is the basics of importing assets into After Effects. Uh, in the next lesson we'll cover how to animate them.